Well, not everyone agrees with the widespread opinions about Mr. Milosevic's guilt. Vladan Ivkovic joins us now from our New York bureau. He's a Bosnian Serb expatriate who was forced to flee his home during the Bosnian war. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to start by getting your reaction to the news of the death of Slobodan Milosevic. The death of Slobodan Milosevic, you can't be happy about anybody dying, but the death of Slobodan Milosevic brings a closure to the process, to his, to his trial and to everything that Serbia went through uh, during his rule. Uh, for the past five years since he's been extradited, Serbia lived a different life, but uh, his death will, everybody was waiting for some kind of result of his trial. And uh, nobody expected this kind of result. Everybody expected him to be, all Serbs expect, expected him to be convicted, although they didn't agree with uh, why he was being, what he was being charged with. Uh, Serbs believed that, believed in anti-Serbian bias in the West, and they expected him to be convicted. But uh, he died, and uh, there is a, I think the whole Serbian nation is breathing a, a sigh of relief following his death. And, and that's how I felt this morning when I heard the, the news. And, and is that your thought that um, he was, he was unfair? What were your, what, let me get start by saying, what were your thoughts on that trial itself? Because you seem to be intimating that you think that uh, there was a bias against him before a verdict had been given. In any, war, in any war, there are several sides, and uh, everybody bears guilt. And in this war, only one side has been portrayed as the guilty one. And uh, Slobodan Milosevic was the reflection of what Serbs did uh, during the war, or what was uh, ascribed to them. And uh, Serbs believe that there is an anti-Serb bias because no other leader, no other major leader in the region uh, was charged with, with war crimes and we believe, I personally, I'm a refugee, I was a refugee in that war, I was a refugee since 1992, from 92 to 97 and uh, I was forced out by Bosnian Muslims that fought on the side of Bosnian government so I'm a victim of something and somebody should be responsible for the crime committed against people like me and people that suffered through wars, Serbs that suffered through wars than I did and uh, nobody's, nobody's being held accountable for that, not at the high level uh, I understand that the, the Bosnian, former Bosnian president, Ali Izabegovic, is dead. Uh, Croatian president, Franja Tuzman, was dead. But uh, he was alive when, when uh, he could have been indicted for forcing some 250,000 Serbs out of Croatia. Nobody ever mentions that in the news, and nobody ever, nobody's been held accountable for that. So no matter what they say Milosevic did, other, other uh, ethnic groups and their leaders did, did the same thing. But nobody's, nobody's uh, holding them accountable and for that. And why do you think that is? Why do I think that is? Because mm -hmm. Serbs, led by Milosevic, and that's one of the things I blame Milosevic for, did not uh, adjust to the, to, uh, media, to the ways media and public opinion uh, is handled. At the, end, at the end of the 20th century and now in the beginning of the 21st century, Serbs did not lead a PR campaign. Serbs did not have lobby groups in Washington, in Brussels, in other center of, centers of power. And, uh, and that cost them dearly. And maybe Milosevic, I, I also blame Milosevic for not having a vision to lead a nation. Uh, he had ambition and he had, uh, he was basically a uh, result of uh, communist socialist upbringing uh, during, the during the communist era after the World War II. And uh, he thought and acted like that. He was looking to, to preserve his power and uh, something happened, some, something called rise of nationalism happened in the 80s and he just rode that wave and when Serbs needed a leader when Croats and Bosnian Muslims had their leaders in, in Franja Tuđman and Ali Izetbegović uh, Serbs needed a leader too because throughout history we, we relied on strong leaders Milosevic did not live up to the standards that Serbian leaders prior to him set up and uh, I blame him for not being a good leader but when it comes to uh, his, him being blamed for all the atrocities and massacres and all the war, all the victims of the war, and uh, especially the rise of nationalism. People, when people talk about Milosevic, they say that it was Milosevic's fault that Yugoslavia broke apart. Well, Milosevic was a youngster when Bosnian president, he was not the president at the time, wrote something called the Islamic Declaration, where he calls for the creation of Islamic State and Islamic society. Ali Izetbegovic wrote that in 1970, if I'm not wrong, and he did time for that. Fra Franja Tuđman was already doing uh, jail time for charges related to, to uh, spreading Croatian nationalist ideas. 
Milosevic was nowhere at the time, and he showed up in 1987. So some other aspects of the conflict and the history of the conflict should be looked into before a point is, uh, finger is pointed only in one direction. Right, from what you're saying, far more complicated than is, is generally presented to the public. But I just want to ask you very, very briefly where you think he should be buried, because that is the focus once the autopsy has been done and the results are in. Would you like to see him buried on Serbian soil? Uh, that's his native soil, and that's where he should be buried if his family wants to do that. There are legal impl implications uh, of his family returning to Serbia because, uh, as far as I know, there are some indictments or charges or suspicion uh, of, of criminal, of, of misdoings of, of his son and his daughter. So I don't know if they want to go back and if they're safe going back. Uh, I personally think that uh, if they want their father and their husband to be buried in Serbia, he should be buried in Serbia. That's where he was born. And uh, no matter what he did to Serbs and to people in the, in the region, he deserves to be buried in his native, in, in his native soil. He's a dead person and he, uh, you know, do respect to that dead people no matter what they've done during their life. Lalan Ivkovic, there we must leave it. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, there we get a, a, the opinion of a Serb uh, that's uh, not necessarily supportive at all of Slobodan Milosevic, the man, but also that widespread sentiment that we have seen over and over again from Serbs who feel that they have been treated grossly unfairly by the international community. Well, let's